It's going. You're about to be on in two seconds. Take it easy. Here it is. Boom. There you are. It's going. You're about to be on in two seconds. Take it easy. All go. right. We got you. All right. Now let's switch this out. Happy Friday, everybody. 5.59 p.m. Boom. There you are. And I've got Pierce on the line with me today. And we are talking about venture capital, programmers, developers, and all the stuff that we're working on. Let's see who's out there. Okay, Pierce, there you go. I can see you. Okay, cool, cool. Now I have an echo. We've got to figure out what talking about. Venture capital, programmers, developers, and all of Okay, hold on. Okay, I got to turn my sound off to make this work right. Okay. Um, all right. Why, why am I the thumbnail for this picture? I don't know. All right, whatever. It That's just. Fine. Don't worry. Okay. Fine. Learn more, remember chat. Okay. How's my. We got Zoom. Beautiful. All right, so now let's see who's out there. Dun, dun, dun. Can you see in, it, in the actual chat window? Um, I'm looking through Zoom, but let me see. Okay, that's fine. Are right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. How was everybody's week? I'm, I'm ready. I, look, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm born ready. We've been trying to set this up for a long time. Today, you know, the conversation I want to have, and the reason why I brought Pierce on was that um, one of the GovCon giant students put in my brain uh, last year uh, the idea of starting a venture capital company, and. I had never quite considered that before, but uh, when she put it in my, the idea in my head, it kind of stuck and it resonated with me. And I thought, you know, that's not a bad idea. So, um, and doing my research and finding out all about venture capital, um, I've been talking with people about setting it up, talked to a bunch of attorneys, and it looks like we're getting closer to actually formulating the VC firm. Uh, one of the, the persons that, um, I was talking with and engaging with said that they would be willing to become a limited partner and invest in the VC firm. However, what they want to do was see proof of concept of what we were doing. So that's kind of how we end up to here today is, is that, you know, sharing essentially where I'm at, what I'm doing, what I'm working on and giving you guys a glimpse inside of that. And then also at the same time, we want to reach out to people and see if there's anyone out there who will be willing to help assist in the effort um, in terms of helping us take uh, projects that we see as vital, critical, um, instrumental, and at the same time, we wanna help bring those projects into the government space. So um, I asked Pierce because Pierce has a background in technology. He's already done a lot of this kind of stuff. You probably remember the video we had a few months ago about SBIRs and CSOs and OTAs. And so I brought Pierce along so that he could help kind of uh, lead the conversation in the types of projects that we're looking for, the types of people we're looking for, the types of projects that we've identified. And also, like I said, make a public announcement of who we're looking for, the types of folks out there and see uh, maybe if there's anyone interested in participating. So Pierce. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Hope everyone's having a great day or a night, depending on when you're viewing this. Um, so if you have a pen and paper handy, you might want to um, get that because I'm going to go through a lot of information very quickly. Can, can you share, uh, do you have something on your screen that you could share with them? Um, yes, I have everything for the actual projects, but I have like multiple screens up. 
It, okay. well, see, but can you share so that way people can see and follow along because okay i know a lot, right. especially when it comes to technical stuff that for me um you know i like to see it i'm a visual kind of guy so i like to see it you all you techies got that stuff in your brains but uh, all right let me see see what you can share i mean i have the email that you sent me if you want me to pull that up um which one i send you a lot of emails um but yeah sure go ahead i have the the Navy SBIR human info systems one. Okay, yeah, we can start with that one. Um, what we'll yeah, do is that one's kind of that one's already uh, we're two weeks out, so that's not. I don't know if it's realistic to get anybody involved in it, but we could talk about what it is, and we can also, you know, for people who maybe have an interest in or have some sort of experience in those areas. Let me, I'll pull it up. Hold on. Yeah, I was like, while you pull up that one, I'll uh, I'll screen share mine for the. Air Force, and then we can lead from there into the DIU one. Okay. Did I share? Yep, there it is. So with this one that we're looking at right now, um, this one's for a Twitter bot, basically. Well, it's for a system for the Navy to actually be able to detect bots on uh, fake accounts on Twitter. Basically, bots and fake accounts on Twitter are being utilized in um, MISO or PSYOPs to be able to influence um, the culture, kind of like what happened with uh, the elections and things of that nature. And um, the Navy is interested in finding something to be able to detect these accounts and to go into it of disabling them. Um, this information that Eric is scrolling over right now is stuff that's already out there. Um, I went through, I looked up a few references, I looked up a few past examples of these SBIR is being out there and it's it looks like they are close to a solution, but they're not quite there yet. So uh, in Finland, they've done something similar where they've been able to determine, I think, up to about 80 percent if an account is fake or not. And currently the Navy is looking for something that's a 60 percent solution. If you actually go out, there's a few GitHubs where they actually have a process where this is actually done and they have step by step processes. And this is something that we're looking into. It's kind of a short suspense. Um, this is something that we're trying to have fulfilled and work on to submit within the next two weeks. So if it's something that you know that you can actually help out with, feel free to reach out to uh, Eric, myself, or Maria, and we can move forward on it. If so not- talk to me about the talk, Let's talk about, not, let's, talk, let's not talk about the specifics of the project, but what about the type of people that you need? What, what kind yeah, of that's, what, that's what I was gonna lead into. Um, so the individuals that we would need would be um, anybody that's currently versed in uh, Python, anything um, machine learning, um, as you can see on the screen right now, it's saying NetFlow, similar, anything with uh, open AI or similar Heroku, or if you just have experience with um, analytics, um, that'll be really good if you if you have experience with that. Um, but if you can fit any of those pieces or you know anybody that has experience in any of those pieces that might be interested, feel free to contact them or reach out. We already have the step-by-step -step documentation on how to build it. We have comparable versions of it. We would just need to refine those versions that are currently out there to be able to meet the military standard. So, so what are you looking for exactly? Tell me what exactly you're looking for. Right now, we need to put together a programming team, a programming and dev team to be able to develop the software and they'll be able to work on the software to continue to get it up to the 60% standard that the military is currently looking for. Okay, let me say it in a different way. Let's let's assume that I uh, I have a software company and I have a team of people and I email you guys. What, how does this work? Like what happens next? So what we would end up doing is through Faven, the company that Eric's putting together. Um, right, I'll, okay. By the way, so, um, someone, I want to I want to interrupt. Someone just asked a question, Maurice. Uh, he asked about uh, what tool and machine learning. Can you see the notes? No, let me go back over. Hold on. Um, okay. just what I'll do is Maurice, like what tool machine learning? We're asking questions as we're speaking. All right, how about blockchain? Yes, uh, okay, so, wow, all right. So yeah, Maurice? Uh, yeah, let's see, all right, let me, hold on, hold on, give me a second, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> all right, so I see Maurice. Um, yeah, so, machine learning. Uh, we can actually use any one of those, Maurice. Um, it just depends on if we can meet that 6% standard that they're looking for. Um, can you pull back up that document, Eric? Sure. So what we'll do is we'll go back over, and if anybody else has questions, feel free to type them into the chat and I'll answer them in real time while we're going through this process. That way we can keep everybody involved and engaged. And I also see your question, Richard. I'll get to that as soon as um, we handle this one. So scroll down. 
further, further, further. So this one right, uh, scroll up. So this early detection of information campaigns. Um, whoa. All right. So this is an early example of what they're looking for. Um, overall, they're just looking for a solution. And this is kind of like a older version of uh, the Twitter campaign that they're looking to solve through the bots. But if you look in the description, it says online agitation has increased, well, has resulted in riots, attacks on tourists, ethnic violence, gender violence, and instigation of cyber attacks, murder, and terrorism. So right now they're just looking for anything that can detect that fake account. So if you do have something right now, Maurice, that um, you know you can develop or you can build out, feel free to uh, reach out, even if it is in a uh, Hadloop or Cladera or, or any one of those. Um, it's just overall, they're just trying to meet that end state. It's not a cut and dry thing. They just want to be able to solve that end state. And as you can see, we have two more older examples for you guys to be able to reference if um, you'd like more information. And this detection of crime manipulation in social media, there's actually another version of it. And it's not a one off. There is actually an opportunity that I saw earlier today where the Department of Justice is actually looking for something similar, where they're looking for someone to do um, social media analytics. So basically you're monitoring social media, seeing if there's anything that has to do with terrorism. And that's something that they're actually looking into. So this isn't a one off thing. So if you actually do develop a solution or you have something that's similar or you know can work in either one of these spaces, feel free to reach out Maurice and we can work in that space. Well, <laughs> so uh, you don't really need to create a tool. They already have this stuff out there, but they need it refined. So when I first came across the initial SBIR, um, when I first came across it, I kind of found it odd. But the thing is the Navy wants it built to their specifications. So yes, there are tools out there, but um, they want it built to their specifications and they want it as a web app on the Navy site. So even though you can actually use data analytics and other tools out there that already exist, um, they want that built up to their standards. So that's where the differentiation comes in between what's currently out on the market and what they want. So even if there is something out there, you still need to refine and build that up to be able to accomplish their end state. But, you know, it's interesting that Morris points that out. That's a very, I mean, that Morris, that's a great point that you make, which to me makes it a very simple project to, to, to start with and to engage in because if you already have the tools that are out there and um, someone knows how to modify those tools to meet these requirements, then, you know, it should be a piece of cake. That's the way I see it. Because again, I, I saw the same thing you saw, Maurice, when Pierce pointed out to me, I'm like, wait, people are already doing this stuff. So yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Yeah, okay. And uh, so the same, the same thing that Maurice was touching on. Um, when I originally saw it, I actually ended up um, asking the individual because I was talking to somebody from a, a Navy rep and I was asking them about it. And I was like, is this legit? I asked like four or five times because I didn't actually believe that was legit, but yeah. Um, pretty much the, everything's already out there. They just need the stuff refined. So if you have an idea of what can be done with it, feel free. And um, I see what Richard just commented on um, with the blockchain investigation tool. If that is something that you know you can actually be applied to it, Richard, feel free to um, reach out. And as I said before, there's two different versions of it. There's the one that the Navy's doing, which is the one that we just covered. And there's also the one that just came out um, three days ago that the Department of Justice is actually looking for a solution to be uh, integrated with the FBI. So there's multiple opportunities in that space. It's just coming up with the solutions and getting everything rolled out. If you'd like more information, again, feel free to contact us and we can talk about it and discuss it. Um, wow, that was that was pretty in depth for that one. Um, does anybody else before we move on to the other topics have any more questions about? We'll keep we'll keep moving. They got questions. Okay. Well, you know, we'll ask we'll ask as we go. All right. So what I will do is. So what we are going to do is we're going to shift speeds. We're going to move into CSOs, which are commercial solutions opportunities. And what we'll do is I'll kind of walk you guys through. Um, I just seen something pop up. Hold on. I'll let you know more. I think Donna Grace can help. Got that SBRs. No. So uh, Linda, these the SBR that we're currently talking about. Um, that is going to be due for the Navy. It's due February twentieth. And then the one that I just discussed for the actual FBI and the Department of Justice, that is actually an RFP. And that RFP is due February 28th. You know what? So, oh, wait, Linda says she can help. Pierce, do you know who Linda is? 
I'm trying to get every. I can't see multiple things at one time. Okay, that's fine. Linda, how are you? I know who. I know Linda. If you don't know Linda Pierce, I'm I'm trying to pull up the CSOs. We have a lot to cover in a very short time. Okay, well, look. But I mean, the thing is, we <laughs> but, want, you know we want to. I mean, again, but, people, you know, I look. Linda, tell us. Uh, no, nothing that we're looking at now is due on February the second. However. Um, we are looking at um, a wide range of SBIRs across the board and different categories. So um, thank you, Maria, for letting Pierce know. I know there's a... <laughs> All right. Y'all giving me a hard time because I give everybody a hard time. <laughs> All right. By the, way, by the way, Linda, just let me real quick. Linda, we have someone actually who specialized in... Uh, SBIRs. SBIRs. That's going to be coming on board. So we could definitely help you out um, in that arena. Go ahead. Sorry, Pierce. Yeah. Okay. So hold on. Let me make sure all my stuff is together. So I have multiple screens open. So let me see. Share screen. Air Force Operational Commercial Solutions. Share. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yep. All right. Great. So let me see. But I, I need to make this a little bit smaller on my, so I can see you too. Okay. Go ahead. All right, so we'll, we'll, there we go. And oh, I don't know where it went. Okay. Um, Stop sharing. Yeah. Um, I think that might have happened. Okay. Screen sharing has stopped sharing when it was close. Let me try this one more time. Minimize screen share. And what we're covering right now for everyone that's still on the line, um, these are opportunities that won't be due for like another two years. So we have a window of time to actually be able to work on them. These are commercial office self solutions. So if the, you know somebody who's currently working in this space, can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you currently know somebody that's working in this space, I can't currently see the um, the chats. So if you currently know some- screen went really big. Yeah, I just, I made it bigger for everybody at home so they can see it. I, I, what I did was I just zoomed in on my window. Oh, I maximized mine. All right. Yeah, maximize the whole screen so we can't even see what's all right. Okay, so you want to make it smaller? No, no, go ahead. I, I, thought, <laughs> I, I got it. All right. So um, basically, what we're about to cover is these are CSOs, small. They're through the Air Force. With these, um, the award is not that big, but it's more of a long term play. So if you are working with a technology company or if you are a technology company that's looking to get into the federal marketplace to avoid the um, you need experience to get a contract and you need a contract to get experience issue, you can go for some of these smaller CSOs and just kind of present your solution and get that experience that you need and also engage with those contracting officers and those um, award agencies and those entities. And you can kind of leverage that to grow your brand and provide more value if you're trying to go and raise money for investors or if you're trying to just continue to expand into the federal marketplace. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on um, the highlighted areas, just kind of talk about what they need. And Eric, if you can keep a kind of an eye on the chat window as I'm yeah. going through, gotcha. because I have my whole screen covered up with this. So the first place is gonna be Ellison Air Force Base. What they're doing is they're looking for anything that has to do with uh, installation entry control, their base security systems or anything that can enhance their way of patrolling the installation and situational awareness for security forces. So if you know anyone that has any experience with developing um, security systems for law enforcement, or they might have a technology that helps with um, patrols or anything that can increase um, their situational awareness that they already have developed. So it doesn't have to be something that they're building from scratch. If it's something that they already have developed, feel free to have them reach out and if they want, we can provide them with the information. And this information, everything that we're going to cover is through, um, it's already out within Beta Sam. So they can go and look at it. And again, it doesn't close until 2022. So they have ample time to be able to go out and develop the solution or find somebody who has the solution. If someone wants to um, partner with somebody to bring so this to the marketplace. Let me ask you a question for, for all of us lay people out here. You said it doesn't close in 2022. So if I have a solution right now, can I go take it to the government now? Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So it's, it's so it's open. I can take it. I can submit my solution at any point um, up until 2022. Correct. Okay, fair enough. And yeah, then so and then uh, so what are you recommending? How do I do that? So um, I would actually recommend reach out to us. Yeah. First? Yes. Okay. 
Because there's a lot, there's more to it than just having the solution. Well, that and um, a lot of the times when it comes to, and this is something I kind of know, a lot of times when it comes to the federal marketplace, if you're going into one of these situations, you just, if you're the tech company, you're focusing on your tech and you're focusing on building up your company. You really don't want to deal with um, all the additional stuff that you have to deal with when working with the government. So since we have a team of people that are experienced in working with the space and experienced in engaging with the government, just to make it easier on everyone, I think that would probably be the best avenue of approach to have us handle the government's peace and kind of be the go-between to be able to say, hey, this is what they want, these are the requirements, and just to kind of let the tech company focus on building out the solution and working on using and leveraging this opportunity to build out their company. That way everyone wins instead of dealing with uh, additional work that you might not know about. Okay. 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 And um, there's, there's, we have like seven pages to go through. So <laughs> we have a lot, but um, there's also additional opportunities. Um, as you can see, if anybody's aware of common access cards or anything that has to do with biometrics, they are also looking um, in capabilities to automate that. Because anybody that um, currently goes on to a military installation, you know, in order to get on the installation, you have to show them your cat card and they have to scan it in order for you to be able to come on. So if you can think of a way to kind of use maybe, I don't know, NFC with the chips that come included in the CAT cards, um, that could be a solution that you can bring forward. There's there's different ways to approach these. And there's also vehicle inspection that they're currently looking for. Um, if you've ever gone on to a military base that has high security, you know, they do the normal walk around, they look at your car, they bring out the mirrors, they check underneath the car just to make sure that you're coming on base and it's just you, or they'll have you pull up to the side of the road, take everything out of your car, check the trunk. Anybody who's been on a military base kind of has an understanding of how the process works, but they're looking for ways to automate that. So if you have any solution on how to automate that, maybe determining the weight of the vehicle and having that set off a sensor or determining if the person's um, acting strangely while pulling up to the gate through camera monitoring, anything that you can develop or that you think that you might know somebody that's working in that space, feel free to bring them forward because these are already solutions that the company itself should have. And it's just making a few adjustments to bring, to bring those into federal space. Um, on your end, Eric, do you see anything being asked um, in the questions box that needs to be addressed? Okay. Everybody's quiet. Okay. And then um, for anybody that's working with the drones, I know we've spoke to a few people that work in that space. We have someone if, now. Okay, so you said what? We have someone right now that's doing, um, Maria knows it. What is it, geomapping? With drones, Maria knows it. He she talked to the guy today or yesterday. Okay. Talk to me. What about the drones? Tell us about it. So, um, if you look at number three, I'll highlight it really quickly for everyone. So this one right here. So they're looking for a way that um, can operate drones around airports and in that environment. So what they normally end up running into is um, space heights. So drones are allowed to fly at a certain height, planes are allowed to fly at a certain height to keep those from engaging or getting in each other's way. Everybody has their line um, altitudes that they're supposed to fly at. So if you have a solution for that or people flying drones around airports or flying drones within the city um, and working within those limits, the Air Force is interested in that. Mainly they're saying an airport environment because it's an air base, it's an Air Force base, so they're gonna have aircraft coming on and off of the base. So if you have a solution for that, that's something that they'd be interested in. Um, again, we spoke about, well, I spoke about earlier, um, the automated system, which would be this one, user-friendly automated security and surveillance camera system, artificial intelligence, basically um, detecting anything that shouldn't be there or detecting anyone with strange, um, strange movements. That way they can kind of alert security forces. And then there's VR, AR. Um, as we go through this, there's gonna be a lot of uh, virtual and augmented reality mentioned because it appears a few times in here. So if you know anyone in this space or who operates in this space, feel free to reach out to them and let them know to um, look at the video or just reach out to Maria or reach out to Eric or myself. Now, now let me ask you something. I'm gonna stop you and ask you this. Why yeah. would someone who's operating in space not already be looking at these things? Well, some people don't wanna operate in this space because they don't- Oh, really look, there's, there's my aerial mapping guy. <laughs> yeah, we can. All right. So I'll, I'll take it as Johnny. Why, why someone not? Why would someone not um, why, why are they not looking at this already? Well, so um, a lot of it comes down to, first off, being able to find the information. So first off, you have to be able to know where to look. And then the second part of it is the headache that some people perceive that there is um, when working with the federal government. 
So you might have a company that's doing successful, or you might be doing well, and you might look at it as um, the juice might not be worth the squeeze to you. So you might look at it as, okay, I have to jump through all these hoops to work with the federal government, but I'm not getting a seven figure contract out of it. So why would I do it? And that is where you kind of go back to the, you know, you're working with them to get the experience to work and lead into these bigger contracts. Because what we're covering right now is one Air Force base. But if you do good at this Air Force base, that contracting officer is going to talk to other contracting officers at other Air Force bases. Those commanders are going to talk to other commanders at other bases. And they're going to say, hey, we had this guy come in and he gave us a solution. Maybe this solution can work for you guys. So now that base that you're working at that you've done a good job at is basically campaigning for you to get more business and more contracts. And you can leverage that to be able to build out to those seven figure contracts, to those eight figure contracts. But you have to start somewhere. And I think a lot of people, when they come in, they feel like those smaller contracts aren't worth their time or their effort. So they just kind of overlook it. But this but this is not even um, like a contract, like an RFP type. Right. So this no. is totally different. Yeah. So this would be much easier uh, for someone to actually uh, get a start and work in the federal arena without exactly. having to do a, a, like a competitive type bid. Correct. But again, it's a smaller size contract. So, okay. and, and that's, that's, that's where I think a lot of people get hung up on. A lot of people get hung up on that piece of hearing. It's not a giant contract and they automatically just push it to the side, not understanding the smaller contracts are what lead to the bigger contracts. As no, I'm I, sure I, I, you, you can attest to. Sure. I, no, of course. Yeah, I can attest to that hundred um, percent. But um, when you say smaller size contracts, what are we talking about here? Because obviously the people here who are developing out these solutions uh, you know, they've, they've invested their money, their time, they've got resources tied up. So what are we, what are we talking about here? Uh, in terms, you said they're smaller size contracts. What does that mean? Like dollars and cents. So you're looking at, you're looking at anywhere from about, I would say about 10 K to maybe a hundred, 200 K. So nothing too, nothing too uh, vast or too right. big as far as the contract but size. But it's just the test of your solution. Yes. And that's, and, and in some cases, that's all you need. In some cases, okay. you might have somebody that wants to use your technology, but they want it vetted. So now you're, to, you're looking to see, well, where can we implement this technology at? But if you can go and say, hey, you know, we developed this technology. Yes, we don't have a customer base of a thousand or we don't have a customer base of a hundred, but we would, we were able to do where we were able to go and uh, partner with the Air Force and we're currently have them as one of our main customers. Or if somebody's saying, hey, I want to use your technology, can you give me a reference? I don't see anybody saying that a reference from the Air Force or a reference from the Navy or a reference from the Army or the Marines is not good enough for them and their company. I see most people being like, okay, well, if the Department of Defense trusts you to be able to develop a solution for them, that's good enough for us. Okay, Richard just asked a question. He said, I'm a security guy. So if I submit something, how do I protect my IP? Which is okay. So uh, Richard, are you, well, I can type it in the chat. Hold on one second. Um, Richard, are you currently active duty? Or are you currently a military guy on a base? Why don't we keep, why don't you keep going and I'll ask that we can um, type in the okay. question. So that, right. that way everyone's not waiting so for just holding up. There is a delay okay. and the, there's a, like a lag between us talking and them typing. Got it. Got it. Okay. That works. So what we'll do is we'll keep scrolling. Um, and as you can see in this paragraph, this is something that you're going to see um, as we continue to go through this whole thing. It says the Air Force is interested in exploring innovative technology domains that may not be covered in the list above. So this topic is intended to be a call for open ideas and technologies that cover related areas not currently listed above. So um, if it's something that has to do with blockchain or anything else that you think um, might be able to save money or be able to help out the Department of Defense or this base particularly and what they're trying to accomplish, feel free to come forward and it can be submitted as an open call. Yes, they might not um, be inclined to fund it as quickly as they are the topics that they've already brought up, but that opportunity is still there because they're still interested in what you're bringing forward. So don't self disqualify by saying, okay, well, they're not talking about what I have up there because you might have a really good idea that they might have not considered, or it might have, it might be something that hasn't crossed their mind because they're focused on different priorities. And we'll go down to uh, number two. Richard says old Vietnam vet. Oh yeah. You're, 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 you're fine, Richard. Um, as long as it's something that you're not doing um, active duty while you're working, but with these CSOs, what they're mainly looking at is if the solution is already developed. So for a SBIR, um, as you're going through the process, they would actually help you out with the IP 
and things of that nature. With the CSO, um, these are commercial solutions that are already out there. So it would just be taking something that's off the, off the shelf, or if you know of a company that's currently working in this space, it would be going to that company and possibly um, working with that company as a consultant or partnering with that company to bring the technology forward. So that's a, um, a pathway you can also take. So the, the short answer is he's, a, he's his IP is safe and secure? Yeah. Okay. So um, the second opportunity that we're gonna be looking at is going to be the Civil Engineering Squadron for Ellison Air Force Base. Um, and all this stuff for the people that are at home that are viewing, I don't know how many people are viewing currently, but all this stuff revolves around um, Air Force bases. So they're really small, really quick turnovers for Air Force bases to be able to get them in. And for this one, um, what they want to do is, I didn't really highlight anything in this one. It was a lot of verbiage, but mainly what they're focusing on is, um, excuse me. Can you zoom in uh, on Microsoft Word, please? Yeah. More. You didn't zoom in. It's at the bottom of your screen. I did. You got 100%. I'm at 140%. Um, I don't see that. It says 100% on our screen. Okay, maybe it's it's the lag. Okay, I'm at 150%. I'll keep it here okay. and I'll, yeah, I'll just scroll from here. Okay. And the lag should be able to pick up the difference. Let me know when the difference is. Uh... I'll let you know. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. Okay, now it's good. Okay, so what we're talking about right now is um, Ellison Air Force Base. What they are looking at is um, operations for uh, VR. Again, so if you know anybody that operates in that VR space, feel free to uh, reach out to them. So what they currently do is they want to practice um, their snow operations, but they can only practice their snow operations in the snow. So they're trying to figure out a way to be able to practice those by using um, AR or VR to be able to practice those tactics without actually having to do it in the snow itself. Oh, that's cool. I like that one. So um, it's mainly AR VR focused. Um, I, I don't really see anything outside of that, but um, if you know anybody that operates in that space, feel free to bring them up, uh, bring them forward and we can work with them on that. And even these ARRs that they have, the active after action reviews, all that stuff all ties back into them being able to use this capability for, for virtual reality and to be able to practice um, utilizing that technology. And if but, you want some more information, I'm gonna highlight this right now that shows um, what they're basically talking about, so. By the way, just if, if someone is out there and you're already working on something and you need help with it, please reach out um, because we have a guest, a podcast guest, who su successfully submitted an SBIR uh, many, many years ago that's now, his, his technology has been widely used um, across the United States at different military installations. And then he's also served on the other side where um, he actually helped review the SBIRs. And so he's gonna be coming on. I'm actually doing an interview with him next week. Uh, it probably won't be released for you know about a month and a half, but uh, he is definitely, he's already said he's willing to help people I know that he's gone on a road show talking about SBRs and trying to increase the participation. Um, his, his focus was minorities, but again, trying to just increase the awareness and participation. And, and really, you know, that's why we're on here tonight, because these are things that, again, this is helping uh, solve some of the nation's uh, issues. And we would like to be at the forefront of that. Go ahead, Pierce. Okay. Just in case so, someone jumped off and I wanted to make my spill before they jumped off. Oh, no, man. We're all here to hear you talk. That's what we're all here for. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, um, again, what we're going into right now, and I actually found this one to be pretty interesting. So, again, we're, we're back at Ellison. Um, for their morale, welfare, and readiness, what they're looking at is AR, VR, and esports, which is something that you really don't hear too many people say they want to go and work with the federal government for esports. But, yeah, there's an opportunity for esports. So, it kind of goes back to Eric's old adage of, the government buys everything. So if you have a solution, don't be afraid to bring it forward. Um, basically, what we'll do, I'll just scroll down and I'll highlight um, what they're looking for. So they want to bring a lot of um, indoor entertainment options. Okay. Uh, for for um, Johnny just said that we can do geospatial mapping and 3D model using our equipment. Perfect. Okay, so um, that would be well, you can respond to him and I'll, I'll cover this that way. I know there's still that slight delay. So what, what I'll do is um, 
I'll focus on this and I'll let you speak to him uh, for that. And basically what they're trying to do is if you've ever, I know one place that actually has it that's pretty that's pretty big into their morale, welfare and readiness, their MWRs as they call them. Um, I know the MWR at Fort Riley, they, they put a lot of money and a lot of backing into it. It's a place called the Warrior Zone. That says, uh, he said to ask you to share his email with attachments of his blockchain solutions that he needs help with. Uh, to share my email with my attachments. He, okay. says, he says, Eric, ask Pierce to share my email with attachments of my blockchain solutions that I need help with. So am, am I sharing my email or is he, is he sharing? He says, he says my email. I, I think, did you, did, have you spoken to Richard before? Um, I know I've actually, I, I, I remember uh, seeing an email, Richard email, reaching out to me before. Um, I don't think I have that. I don't think I have that. Okay. All right. Richard, right. Type, uh, I'm, we're not understanding what you're asking. Yeah, Go ahead, um, I'm, I was like, my apologies to Richard. Um, I'm trying to multitask because I have a lot that I'm trying to get through. And I know like the average attention span is very short. I don't know how much time everyone has, but um, yeah, just feel free to um, reach out to me with an email. Um, I've looked a lot at a lot of stuff in the blockchain space. So there's always opportunities there. You say um, you just sent your email, that's why. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll check that in, in a second. Right. Um, and I'll, I'll most definitely respond. Um, okay, so he said he wants to share it. Oh, okay. Well, not now, but we'll go ahead. We'll go through. Let's go through our, <laughs> okay, I was like, I'm, I'm, we'll I got a lot. Email. Okay, so uh, currently the 354th is looking for solutions. So if you have anything that works in the AR space, um, the VR space, or esports, um, what they want to do is be able to. And I'll highlight technology solution to integrate alternate augmented reality, virtual reality, and esports technology to provide opportunities for families to connect, compete, and demand indoor fun during the winter months. So if you're currently already operating in this space and you're creating AR solutions or you're creating VR solutions, or you you already have an esports company and you've been looking to um, basically just easily increase your revenue or to just partner up, um, this would be a good opportunity. And the reason being is because every base, almost every base has an MWR. So if you do this at one base, it's one of those things that would be replicated. So it can lead to multiple contracts. Um, so again, if you know anybody that works in that space, feel free to have them reach out. And as we go down, um, even if you don't operate in any of these spaces that we've covered so far, again, don't self disqualify because there's multiple opportunities. And as we get further down into it, you'll see some of the simpler opportunities that actually currently exist. All right, so um, at McDill, and this is something that a lot of the companies that are probably on the line, they probably know somebody who can develop a solution for. So they're looking for stuff in HR, engineering, weather, Maria, logistics and aircraft maintenance. So um, these are some of the challenges that they're facing right now. So uh, workforce management. So if you have a workforce management technology, which most software companies are probably working on or they have a partner company that they know has this technology, you can bring that forward. Again, these are commercial solutions that are already out there that you're just bringing forward to them for the problems that they currently have. Um, if you have any HR in and out processing information or software that you know that you can bring forward, feel free. Um, it currently tells you the issues that they're dealing with. They're doing it via paper. So um, they wanna see if there's a way to be able to automate that process. Again, it, it kind of ties back into the uh, Twitter bot that we discussed earlier, where these aren't things that are too complicated to be able to bring a solution forward to. It's just being able to go back and tailor it to what the Air Force actually needs. Because even though this is what they have stated, as you discuss um, the information with them, they'll go more into detail and they'll be able to give you more feedback about exactly what they need. So this is just kind of like a broad overview. And as you discuss with them, they'll be able to give you more details. Um, anything that's green technology. So anything that's um, saving um, energy, they're, they're all for. Um, anything that's predictive for hurricane or, or any type of problematic weather, um, they would love to have that. Um, anything that's EMP resistant or that can resist EMPs, now I can tell you the military is always looking for that. So this one right here, number five, if you have a solution for this, um, that's one of those things where just bringing that forward to that one base can replicate some multiple contracts because that's something that the military is always working on. Um, anybody that works in automation, if you have an inventory system, again, something that most companies, 
if you're working in the software space, you already have or you know of a partner company that might have. And we always have uh, VR. So I like okay. VR is going to be somewhere. Right, let me let me stop you real quick. So for okay. all the people who are just joining us, um, what we're doing is we have uh, Pierce is talking about solutions, SBIRs, um, uh, CSOs and OTAs. And we had a conversation before about this, but now what we want to do is we actually are in the process of creating a VC firm. And one of the things that one of our LPs said is that they'll, they would be willing to invest, uh, raise capital for the fund, but they wanted to see us actually take a solution and uh, present it to the government and get them to buy in. So we're reaching out to people who are developers and programmers. So, and we're identifying solutions that we think make sense, that are viable, that people probably have already worked on. And we want to help you guys bring those solutions to the government place. So again, if you're just coming on board today, that's the conversation we're having. This is more of a technical type of uh, YouTube live, not my normal spiel, but uh, it is much needed because we are ultimately all serving the same purpose, which is the warfighter mission. So again, um, today we're talking about uh, potential solutions that people have already developed, that they're working on, and how do we uh, bring that to the government space? And we want to help you do that today. Go ahead. Okay, great. And while you were doing that, I was actually able to, uh, I, I have your email, Richard. I, I can see the email. Yeah. Um, I, I saw I saw the comments. Um, I'll continue to go through this one. And once I finish out this section, we can go back and uh, kind of reference his email. Um, so what I'm looking at right now is, um, again, if you have anything in that VR space, feel free to bring that forward. Um, cooling systems for aircraft, if you can bring that forward, they'd be interested in that and interior uh, lighting options. So most of this stuff ties into their aircraft. Um, so this is what I kind of found weird. So this uh, palletized lavatory or restroom that's compatible, that that was kind of weird. But um, as you can see, it says many KC-135 do not have bathrooms and currently requires workarounds that are less than desirable. So um, you might be someone where you don't have a technology, but you, go ahead. No, okay. okay. Well, you don't have a technology, but you might know of a way to be able to fix their issue where they're having with these bathrooms. So you might have a system that, that you know, just like, I don't want to say a pop-up bathroom, but I guess <laughs> for, for all intents of services, for purposes, well, you might have a palletized bathroom. I mean, yeah, I mean, well, that's pretty much what it is. So if, if you have a solution like that, that's something that you can bring forward. And as you can see, it says that many of those aircrafts don't have that, that option to have a bathroom. So if you develop it for one, that's going to be something that you're going to be developing for multiple aircraft because they don't have that option. Why, so did, that's, aircraft, why did they not have bathrooms? I don't, I don't, that's, that's, I don't make the aircraft, man. I'm just, Boeing, I'm just make, Boeing got all this money. They're making these big old planes and they can't put a bathroom on the plane. Hey, all right, keep going. That's an opportunity for somebody to capitalize on. No, no, so, no, no, I'm cool with that. Look, I would like to uproot Boeing if we could. Okay, and moving on. <laughs> so, um, so, and this was something I, I saw. That I, can't, was, I can't just listen to the whole ding, 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 ding. You know, we got to make this thing live. It's Friday night. Some people are getting ready to go to happy hour and they're listening to us talk about palletized lavatory compatibilities on case. Well, they're making a sacrifice. That way they can have happy hour all the time on the beach. Ooh, I like Happy hours is not nicer when you're, when the money's working for you and you're doing it on the beach. But uh, <laughs> keep, keep, now you're speaking some truth. All right, keep going. <laughs> All right, so um, another simple software is a, a shutting software for aircraft maintenance efforts. So if you know somebody who currently has that type of software out there um, and you can tailor it for aircraft maintenance, for aircraft maintenance, my apologies, um, feel free to reach out to them or feel free to bring that forward. Because again, all the Air Force has is aircraft. So if you have something for that, that's another one of those solutions that can be multiplied and brought to uh, multiple places and multiple bases when it comes to developing and rolling out the <laughs> Sorry, Ray, Ray Zay just came from happy hour and Linda said cheers. Cause Linda actually has events, it's beers and breweries or something. Which by the way, Linda, we took that idea and all my meeting greets are gonna be at places where there's happy hour. So thank you for giving us that great idea. Go ahead, Pierce. Okay. And so again, as you can see, um, and th this is something that everybody can kind of attest to. And it, it states that on each one of these, as you go through each base, it'll say that even though they've stated what they're looking for, they're also open up other options. So 
don't feel f- like just because there's not anything there that applies to your current situation or your current business that you can't submit anything for it. You can always submit something. Now, again, um, just because it's not on the list, it might not be a priority for them. But if the solution is innovative enough and the impact is great enough, I'm pretty sure they'd be open to accepting it. Maurice said, are they currently working with a scheduling software as of now? So unfortunately, all the information that I have would be um, what, what, what I'm currently looking at. I'm pretty sure they do, but it's probably one of those things where they're cobbling together different pieces to be able to develop that solution. And that's something that you'll see as we go through. Um, I think we're halfway done. Okay, we're less than halfway done. So as we get um, towards the end and we cover more information, you'll see where they they state like, hey, this is what we're currently doing or this is our current workaround, kind of like they did with the lavatories where they're like, we have a workaround, but it's less desirable. So they have something in place, but they know that it's not the optimal way to do things. And that's kind of where you're coming in with your solution and saying, I know you guys are doing this, but doing this, either you're spending additional money, either um, you're utilizing manpower in a way that you shouldn't. And that's where you're able to show your savings because they already have that pain point. They just need you to fix it. So it makes it a lot easier overall, I would think. And now we're gonna move to um, Dover Air Force Base and what they're dealing with. Um, again, some of the stuff we've already covered, so they're touching on the first two being base security systems, which we discovered. Uh, well, go ahead, go ahead, Eric. I can By see the way, if, again, if someone has a specific question, please ask the question. Um, you know, that's why we're here. I, I want to see uh, what kind of, or maybe you've tried it before and you face some sort of challenges. I, I want to hear from people. Yeah, that would be great. The challenges that you face, the obstacles, um, you know, some of the roadblocks where you stumbled at, where maybe you went to submit something and uh, you, you were missing a certain element of it. That's kind of what we're here for. I mean, because again, it's very easy for us that we could send this information to anybody. Um, you know, we don't have to actually read it to you because I think everyone on here is pretty confident. So, you know, but for me, I, I didn't want to talk about it because I know if we don't ask, we don't receive. And so I've been trying to get peers um, online for two weeks now to reach out to people and ask for this stuff. Otherwise, we wouldn't be waiting until two weeks before the Twitter bot was due. But nevertheless, <laughs> there's going to oh, be more okay. opportunities coming down the pipe. Oh, all right. I got to throw them under the bus. Like, that wouldn't be me if I didn't. Man. Oh, wow. But nevertheless, you know, I figured I would reach out and, and make the ask for people because um, I remember a year and a half ago, maybe even up two years ago, people were reaching out to me asking about bringing new technologies into the government sector. And I didn't have any experience of that. Now, you know, fast forward 18 months later, working with peers, we are on calls once a week at the minimum, sometimes two or three times a week. Uh, you know, I'm growing to learn about this area. And again, you know, my background, I'm an engineer. So I, I love technology and I would love very much so to be part of some of these solutions. And again, I know because I've got friends that are techies that, that, that's all they're good at, right? Is creating the solution. Everything else kind of falls to the wayside. So um, we want to be able to create um, uh, an environment where we can help support uh, those, those persons out there who do have those solutions. Because again, the government needs it. We need it. The United States needs it, okay? So again, I mean, that's, look, I, I've never been on a KC-135, but I would hate to be on any plane that don't have a toilet. I'm just, that's just me, <laughs> you know, that's just me. Hopefully I'm jumping out of it real soon or real fast, but to, you know, just to think uh, of being in those conditions. And uh, so that's really why we're here is to engage with folks who may be in the sector, who may be in the space and then put out the request. Because again, you know, you never know who, uh, what you have and how valuable it may be. I can tell you that particularly coming from myself because I never thought that the information I had was valuable. And as you can see, we're approaching 10,000 subscribers. Apparently, uh, it's it's been working, and uh, I think my passion um, outshines the actual my actual skill set. But nevertheless, it's working, and we're I've been connecting people together. And because Pierce has this, he's been hiding in the background. True, he's an introvert, just like probably some of you guys developers out there. So I had to pull him out from the background and put him on the forefront. And it took a lot to get him here. So again, ask your questions. Go ahead. You didn't have to tell everybody I was an introvert, but it's cool. <laughs> um, so back back to uh, the discussion. So um, again, 
if you look at number one and number two, um, option number one, and as I'm going through, if there is anything that stands out to you, feel free to uh, just kind of chime in, kind of like uh, what Richard did, and just say, hey, well, this is something that stands out to me, or, you know, um, what do you think about this? And, and just ask questions like Maurice did. I, I noticed that there's like 24 people on here. So even if you think it's a stupid question, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Because the same question that you're thinking about asking, somebody else might be thinking about asking, but they might be afraid to ask. Right. Um, so we're going to cut out at seven because I'm hungry. I'm fine with that. <laughs> so here, okay. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of speed through it. Yeah, so what I'll do is 11 minutes. Yeah. I'll touch on everything. And if it's something that people care about, then just chime in in the comments and we'll go back to it and we'll stop on it. How about that? That way we can kind of wrap this up since we're halfway through. Okay. So um, currently there's base security systems. We've already covered that inventory management. We've covered that um, emergency management. So that's kind of new, but if you know anybody that operates in that space that might be currently supplying their state or their local um, fire department, police department, ambulances, things of that nature, um, they're interested in that. Autonomous pickup and delivery of small parts and supplies. Again, that kind of goes back into drones and, and things of that nature. And if you look right up underneath it, it's drone detection capabilities over large areas. So Air Force Base, they want to be able to detect if somebody's using a drone before they put an aircraft in the sky because you don't want to lose um, half a million dollar aircraft, a million dollar aircraft, because somebody decided to put a $40 drone up and it ended up in an engine or something like that. So perfectly understandable. Um, any type of transportation solutions for um, anyone that is currently working on sensors or anything that they're trying to get implemented into a city um, for around base and community work, they have that smart city technology. So if you are someone who is developing smart city technology or sensor technology or IoT technology, and you're trying to take it to your local city and they don't have the budget, which is something I've ran into in the past, um, this would be a great place to kind of address those needs. And any type of indoor outdoor surveillance systems, again, tying back into the base security systems. Do, 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 do. We'll scroll down a little bit further. And again, they have the shuttling system for aircraft data. So that's something that they're really big on and they're looking for. Um, Next, is anybody commenting in or are we still good to go? No, no, they're good. I'm just, okay. I'm, I'm wanting to set up calls because Richard seems like he's got some solutions. Yeah, I, I that's my ideas. Um, yeah, I, I saw his email, but um, we're on a time crunch. No, no, so no, no, no. I, we're gonna, we'll, we'll do it offline. We'll talk to them offline. Okay, okay, that'll work. So, right now, um, they have logistic systems. And for a lot of logisticians, this will probably come in handy because if you're a logistician, you're probably working with some type of logistic system. So you can bring that forward. Simple solution that you already have that you're using day to day that you can just make a few tweaks to bring that forward as a solution. Anything that has to do with warehouse equipment and management systems, again, if you're a logistician, you're probably dealing with something like that. Um, wing communication systems, excuse me, normally it has to do with like um, alerts or anything like that. Database management. And then they have VR, AR again, force protection, which ties back into security forces and a contingency response, which is emergency management. And then they're also looking for, again, warehouse management solutions. So anything to do with um, inventory for rapid deployment. And they also want AR, VR or virtual reality and AR. And for the people that are working with um, management systems, they have stuff for that. Now, um, I know Richard's working with blockchain. This might be something that Richard might want to look at for the development of centralized global management systems to consolidate access, input, and tracking. So that is also that's something that they can kind of use like the blockchain for or the distributed ledger of the blockchain for. Uh, nerd stuff, nerd stuff. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> you remind me of one of my videos. I was like... <laughs> All right. So... Um, Okay, they also, said, what type of database, SQL or no SQL? Again, um, they really don't give any detail on that. Oh, so that, that would be something that we'd have to follow up on with them once we get uh, more insight. And then we could follow up with them and say, hey, this is the database that we have. And they will kind of give us more feedback as we tell them that we have a solution. That way we can tailor it to what they need. Um, right now, uh, again, shuttling system resiliency um, for aircraft maintenance operations. And as I said in the very beginning, most of this stuff multiplies over. So if you develop a solution for the first base, we're on like the, we're on the sixth base now, and they're saying they need the same solution. So just because you roll it out one time doesn't mean that it can be used again. So this one time that you rolled it out, 
off of that one time, you could have gotten four more opportunities with four more military bases. So that's where those small little contracts start to add up. So if you get four or five bases and they're all $30,000 contracts, yeah, you didn't start off with a $100,000 contract, but you've made more than that by the time it's over. Okay, and um, smart maintenance and support equipment, enabling less human interaction. Um, this is something that's kind of new that we haven't seen as we've been going through this list, and that's additive manufacturing. So if anybody has anything to do with that, I think you said you spoke to somebody that worked in that space before, Eric, um, a few weeks ago. Additive manufacturing, what do you call it? So additive manufacturing is uh, 3D printing. So like the pieces yeah, that had, actually yeah I, I had someone that yeah. reached out to me. so uh, it's the stuff that actually goes into the printing of those parts. I have a guy who actually uh, yes he 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 deals with several um, manufacturers who do three D printing. Yeah, so that would be like the actual um, components and the the materials that they're using to do that printing. So um, Paris, uh, make sure we send Linda this document. She just asked for it. Okay. Um, I don't forget. Go ahead. All right, I'll I'll take a note. And, uh, I just want to put out so that way both of us can remember. No problem. Okay. And again, they're looking for um, settling. Um, now, this was interesting. If anybody knows anything about um, heating and operating in cold weather operations, they're looking for a safe heated environment for ground activities. So that's kind of, I think they want to replace those old vents. Um, they're really not vents, they're just like giant flames. I can't remember what they're called, but you kind of just sit them outside. I know we use them in Korea and you just sit them outside and you just stand in front of them and stay warm. But um, they're probably looking for a safer version of that instead of just having guys standing around an open flame. Um, any kiosk or information systems for, for passengers terminals? So that's something that's really simple also. So if you know anybody that's a kiosk manufacturer, you can contact them and say, hey, let's go take some kiosks to the Air Force. Really simple. Um, drone capabilities again, um, personal alert capabilities, that ties back into the communication system that we've already seen. Some of this stuff is the same thing, just different verbiage. Um, visual threat training capabilities for ground and air threats against aircraft. Is this at so, a location? Is it, is yep. a so that and, and that's the thing. So um, that's really why I wanted to cover this because I knew if you come up with one solution, just because you have it for that one place doesn't mean you can't use it multiple times. So that's the benefit of being able to kind of grow and expand rapidly by using the CSOs. And again, this isn't due until 2022 for anybody that might have just got on. So you can develop this now and uh, bring it forward. And throughout the time frame, you can go to different bases. You don't have to go to every base at once. You can validate in one base and say, hey, we validate it here. We would like to use this here and continue to push forward. Um, again, augmented training, visual training for maintenance personnel. So again, AR, VR. Um, this was weird. So if you do storage cap capabilities or cabinets, so if you build cabinets or shelves or anything like that, or those lock containers, um, basically sensitive maintenance equipment, uh, equipment I'm talking really fast. Um, all that ties back into um, top secret SCI stuff. So lock cabinets and things of that nature. If you have anything or you know of a manufacturer that might do something like that along the lines of um, cabinets with X09 locks or anything like that, feel free to bring them forward. And um, 3DP AM capabilities for organizations across operations. Again, um, scheduling and just making sure that Everybody's supposed to be where they're supposed to. So workforce management type of stuff. Weight cargo pallets. Um, now, this is interesting. And if you guys are actually paying attention, you can see we kind of drifted from a lot of technology stuff to where they're just looking for solutions, where it doesn't have to be really technology related. But if you have something, just bring it forward. Transportation solutions again, smart city technologies. That's cool. What? Yeah, where you said to the ability to weigh cargo pallets while in transit, like on a forklift. Yeah, well, uh, that's, that'd be like a smaller version of where they, they drive those trucks over to the way. Yeah, station. like the way stations. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Where and with those type of things, it's one of those. It's not really um, tech based. It's not really a lot of coding involved, but you're just bringing forward a solution. And and that's kind of what I wanted to uh, highlight with that piece. And again, this is the same thing. It's a, a different base, but if you look at it, it's the exact same stuff. Transportation solutions, smart city technologies. So um, if, you, if you do have, because we're getting towards the end. So if you do have a solution, um, feel free to come forward. Oh, and this is a simple solution. So I, I almost skipped one of the best ones. 
So if you guys have a teleconferencing app or anything like that, they are currently looking for a solution for members or service members to anonymously connect with the chaplain via an app or another medium to reduce barriers for members to obtain spiritual guidance. So oh. basically, if you're working in a space for telehealth or you have a telehealth solution or you know somebody that has an app like that, you can actually just modify it and set it up for a service member to talk to a chaplain. So there are very simple things that most of this technology already exists. It's just modifying it for the um, military to be able to use it. And this secondary one that I have highlighted where it says organizations receive customer inputs via PDF and they manually generate the documents using the PDF and they want to automate that. So if you are working in automation, like that's really not hard to do, but it's a simple solution. And I think for the most part, um, we made it on time to the end of the page. Okay, so um, we've got several requests for a copy of that document. Um, okay. Can you do me a favor? Let's do this. I'm gonna, while we're on there, do I, do I have that document? Yeah, I sent this to you like last week. We discussed, this is a document that we discussed with Ray. So when I emailed Ray, okay. Okay. Um, that's the same document. All right, hold on, keep talking. Uh, okay, so while we're waiting, we also have- uh, Air Force operation thing? Uh, yep. So now while we're waiting for Eric to push that out to everyone, um, there also is an opportunity for a learning management system for pilots. And this goes back to uh, software. Um, the Department of Defense is interested in prototyping a state-of-the-art learning management solution that can be directly integrated into a flight simulator environment. So they can kind of um, train and see where their pilot's at, but it's specifically used for aviators. They wanna do best practices and um, kind of use that through digital learning management. And they wanna be able to grade and, un they wanna have graded and ungraded evaluations and they wanna have augmented study materials. This is the information that um, I've sent over to Eric, but um, it was something that I wanted to touch upon before we actually got off the call. And if you know anybody that works with learning management systems who might be able to develop something using augmented reality for aviators, um, feel free to reach out to them. Or if they work in the learning management space, um, just go ahead and reach out to them and we can work with them or they can work through this process and actually tailor it to actually work with the Navy. So I said, Marines because they all have aircraft. You said, what's up? No, no, check to see. Um, it says my inner, your internet connection. What, did I black out? No, no, you're fine. Okay. And that's all I have right now. Um, did I cover, did I sufficiently cover any questions that anybody has? Or does anybody have more questions? What I'm going to do. Also, go ahead. Uh, keep okay. And also, um, I know I kind of covered a lot here. Um, I come across stuff like this all the time. So if you guys would like for, I know we kind of went over a lot, and, but this was just kind of like something that we randomly did. But if you'd like, um, I'm pretty sure me and Eric can do this, what, like once or like twice a week or so, or like twice a month or something like that, where we can just kind of sit down and walk through them for the people that might be out there that might've came on late or might be interested in something like this. I just put that uh, file in my Dropbox and I put a link inside the chat that you can click and you should be able to download that file somebody try it and make sure see if it works yeah oh, it works looking for it. it works yeah i'm there I'm, i see it okay thomas earl what did you miss Are you, really were you at happy hour too <laughs> anything in regards to trucking transportation no we didn't talk about trucking today today we're talking about technology solutions so you didn't miss anything about nothing about trucking so overall, was it informative for uh, everybody watching or is there something that you'd like for me to touch on? And if I, if I discuss something that um, while discussing something, if I discuss something or there's a space that you're operating in and I might have left you out, feel free to type it into the chat. And what we can do is um, I can go and try to find that type of information or we can go and find these opportunities because a lot of these opportunities um, that were covered, if you go look them up, it won't populate like that. It'll populate under a uh, sub requirement or under something else. So if there is something that you think that um, you'd like us to touch upon or that we might've missed, feel free to comment. I'm gonna give you guys, I'm gonna give them some time to uh, click the link and download that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I was like, I figured Thomas and Richard would end up speaking. 
I, I think, and are we going to talk to Richard? You said we're going to talk to Richard off of uh, offline. Yeah, we'll talk. We got. We're going to talk to um, Richard and Thomas. Okay, that'll work. That'll work. And somebody Maybe said for digital marketing. So um, currently, Chris, at this point in time, we they didn't have anything for what type of digital marketing are you talking about? Um, they didn't have anything for that. Normally, when they go for digital marketing, they hire uh, staff and personnel and they try to bring in staff and personnel for that. Now, they're actually, you know what? There is something for hold on. Let me see. I think in that doc, you might want to download that document, Chris, in that document. I think there is um, a reference for let me see. Control F social media yep so right here so for chris um if you download that document there's actually something where they're looking for a posting mechanism to be able to post and they want to be able to include gamification in one of their solutions so if that's something that you can actually work on or that's something that you actually can apply a solution to feel free to reach out and work on work on that i, I saw that uh, a while back I have a question on the tech side, which um, you can email either one of us, Maurice. Um, Go ahead. Send, Pierce, put your email in the chat. Let let Maurice email you. And then what we could do, like I said, we'll, we could set up a call to talk, but if he's got something he wants to email. Okay. Unless you want to go through me, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. No, it doesn't matter. All right, there we go. So Pierce's email is in the chat for everyone to have. Like I really got to start giving out my professional email, but whatever. It's cool. That's okay. It's the GovCon Giants. I'm, I'm fine with it. <laughs> like, like, I was like, if it's somebody random, I'd be like, use the business email, but whatever. <laughs> uh, Kadeen said, very informative. Johnny said, great topic. Um, Richard's working on blockchain solution. He's, you know, you guys are great, so good stuff yeah no I, I definitely wanted to um again you know we're gonna have different topics right um and this is an area where i know a lot of people have been asking about it so i definitely want to come on and talk about this and again if, if we need to have more conversations like this we can so all right well uh looks like we've got everybody's questions answered we know the people that um thank you guys for coming today uh you're very welcome linda uh, thanks for participating. That's awesome that you showed up. That was a pleasant surprise to have you on today. Uh, but listen, thanks everybody for watching. Um, and again, hopefully you downloaded the link uh, in there in the page. And like I said, uh, you got Pierce's emails also in the chat room as well. And if there's anything that you'd like to talk about or discuss or have me uh, bring someone else on to talk about discuss. Oh, Pierce, why don't you close out that share? Stop sharing. Uh, that would be oh, wonderful. Didn't know. Um, I'm yeah. listening to you talk, man. I'm... I know, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, there we go. Yeah. So again, um, no, I definitely want to thank everybody for coming on tonight. And I was, I, I've been like really trying to squeeze in uh, a YouTube live session. So, All right, guys. Thank you for watching. I, the next topic that I actually I'm going to come on, probably I'm thinking Tuesday, um, is uh, I want to talk more about Opportunity Zones. So um I want, I want to clarify some things that we discussed in the previous topic. I know people didn't get a chance to ask us questions. So I definitely want to touch on those opportunity zones. Uh, I, I need to get it out before Wednesday because it's a big announcement happening on Wednesday. So I definitely want to do that. So thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Uh, enjoy your weekend. And we will see you soon. Thanks for right. watching. Have a good night. Good night. Um, Mm-mm.